Today I'm going to highlight one of the machines from my collection. This is a replica of an 1894 Berliner hand-driven gramophone. After Emil Berliner came back from Germany after marketing the Cameron Reinhardt Berliner with the 5-inch records, he came back to the U.S. and he started manufacturing 7-inch records in the States um, with this machine uh, to play them. This one is a replica of uh, an early version, so I'm going to show you a later version replica I have in my collection and highlight the difference between that one and this one. This machine means a lot to me because um, it was actually given to me by Oliver Berliner, the grandson of Emil Berliner, who invented the gramophone. Uh, what happened was uh, he needed some work done on his early machines, so he sent them to me, I had them repaired, and I sent them back. And to thank me for that, he had uh, parts, most of the parts for this machine, uh, and he sent it to me and I was able to complete it. It's actually a replica uh, of the hand-driven Berliner gramophone that uh, he owns. What happened was, uh, somewhere along the way, someone made three replicas of his early machine, and this is one of them. So let me show you my other hand-driven Berliner gramophone, the later one, and we can look at some of the differences. This is another replica. It's a replica of um, the more common one that you'll see, uh, even though they are obviously quite rare. But there are some differences between this one and the last one, so let's take a look. When you take a look at this gramophone, you can see that it has a single pulley over here and a crank to drive it, and the belt comes over here in a figure eight position, and there's a flywheel over here. The difference between this one and the other one, which I'll show you in a minute, is this part here too. The casting on this is one piece for all of these parts. Where on the other machine, it's two pieces. You'll notice the um, ID plate on this says uh, Berliner Gramophone Company, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is the replica of the earlier one. You can see here that the pulley that drives it has three different gears on it. And over here is the flywheel. And you'll notice in that there's a slight indentation. So what this was meant for was you could change the ratio of your cranking to driving by moving the, the pulley string here over to a different gear and then wrapping it around here. I think this was also possibly done so that you could use a small electric motor over here and connect it to this pulley and then change the ratio to give you something that will approximate the correct speed for these records. As I mentioned, the uh, mechanics of this one is a little bit different. If I take off this turntable, you can see that this part of the mechanism is actually two pieces. So they probably realized they can uh, make the production a little bit simpler by making it just a single piece. The ID plate on this one also says Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But in actual fact, the one on Oliver Berliner says um, Washington, D.C. So it's an earlier plate. Let's hear what one of them sounds like. I'm going to use an Emerson record because they're much better than the uh, Berliner ones, which you can't hear very well. And this reproducer isn't really set up perfectly. It probably, an original would have sounded a bit better when it was new. So let's just give it a try here. two of my Berliner gramophones. Now I know a lot of you have a machine or a record that is your favorite for some reason and I think a lot of us would like to hear about it. So what I'm going to suggest is maybe you should consider making a video to demonstrate one of your machines or play a record for us. Um, you don't have to do all the editing that I did and all the transitions and everything. Just a, a quick little video playing a record or a quick explanation of a machine that you have and why you like it. I think it'd be great to see that. So think about doing that. Thanks.